we are going to continue our discussions on uh, closed chain parallel manipulators. So, closed chain manipulators. So, to give you the overview of what we are going to discuss in this lecture. So, the displacement analysis of closed chain manipulators, we are going to look at the example of a 3 RPR parallel manipulator which has 3 degree of freedom. We have discussed what a closed chain robot is. It is also known as a parallel manipulator because all the actuators are connected parallelly to the end effector as this uh, figure shows. So, this is one actuator, this is a second actuator, the third actuator, they are all connected parallelly to the end effector. So, this is the end effector and all the actuators are directly connected through links to the end effector. So, this is a parallel manipulator. So, we are going to continue our discussions on closed chain planar robots. Let us look at some of the 3 degree of freedom closed chain planar robots. The first chain I have mentioned is the 3, 3 R. So, according to this nomenclature, actually it is 3 R dash 3 R. So, as per our previous nomenclature, this should be 3 R dash 3 R dash 3 R. So, written in a compact form as 3 times 3 R. So, let us look at this kinematic chain. We have a ground link and the end effector link as I have shown. Now, we have 3 3 R legs. This is 1 3 R leg. This is the other 3 R leg. This is the third 3 R leg. Let us calculate the degree of freedom of this. This ground is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and the end effector is 8, link 8. So, number of links is 8, number of joints 1, 2, 3 plus 3 6 plus 3 9. So, we have 9 joints, 9 kinematic pairs, each having degree of freedom 1 since they are all revolute pairs. So, therefore, summation of degree of freedom is 9. So, therefore, degree of freedom is 3 times number of links minus 1 minus 3 times number of joints plus summation of degree of freedom of each joint. So, this gives us 3. So, this closed chain planar manipulator has 3 degrees of freedom. Next is the 3 times RPR which we are going to look at. 
For that also the degree of freedom calculation remains the same because some of the revolute pairs have been replaced by prismatic pairs. So, three revolutes have been replaced by prismatic, three prismatic pairs. So, let us move forward and look at our three RPR chain as shown here. So, we have this end effector link in blue and there are three legs which are which carry a prismatic an actuated prismatic pair. So, you can see that the coordinates of the end effector point x e and y e are to be and and the coordinates of the end effector point and the orientation. Since this has 3 degrees of freedom, so we can control 3 things. So, position of the end effector and the orientation of the end effector link and we have actuations at these 3 prismatic actuators in terms of S 2, S 4 and S 5. we know that the displacement analysis problem has two parts. One is the forward kinematics problem in which the actuator inputs are given and we are to find out the output. Output means the end effector posi position and orientation. In the inverse kinematics problem for a given output which means the end effector position and orientation is specified, we have to find out the actuator inputs. So, let us look at the forward kinematics problem for the 3 RPR parallel manipulator. So, here we are given the actuator throws S 2, S 4, S 5. So, we are given the lengths of these actuators or these legs we have to find out the coordinates of the end effector x c and y e and the orientation of the end effector link. So, this is the forward kinematics problem. So, let us begin with writing out the coordinates of the points on the end effector link. So, here I have written out the, the relations between the coordinates of point A and the actuator throws S 5 and S 2. So, you can very easily derive these expressions. So, this is the origin of our coordinate system. So, x a square, so x coordinate of a square plus y coordinate of a square is the length of actuator to s 2 square. So, it is length square. The length r a square which is s 5 square is given by x a square plus y a minus l 1 whole square. So, essentially these are equations of circles. So, the first equation is a circle about the origin with radius s 2, the second equation is the equation of a circle with radius s 5 and center 0 l 1. So, r essentially the point R. So, therefore, if I subtract the second equation from the first, if I subtract the second equation from the first, then x a cancels off what I arrive at is this which can be written as 
y a plus y a minus l 1 into y a minus y a minus l 1 is s 2 square minus s 5 square. So, that gives us 2 times y a minus l 1 times l 1 is equal to s 2 square minus s 5 square. So, from here I can solve for y a. So, one half of So, this is the solution for y a. So, I have found the y coordinate of point a and then finding out x coordinate of point a is trivial because I have this equation this is the first equation. So, I can solve for x a. So, we have two solutions with plus or minus signs. So, let us look at this formally. So, this was the solution of y a and x a this has two solutions. So, I have written out these two solutions here, these are the coordinates of point A. So, the two solutions are specified in term are given in terms of these two signs. Now, I can express x b in terms of coordinates of x a and I will now introduce this phi. So, x b, so I am expressing the coordinates of point b in terms of coordinates of point a which is now known to me plus d times cosine phi. So, this distance a b is d as you can see this is d cosine phi this angle being phi and this is d sin phi. So, therefore, x b x coordinate of point b is x coordinate of point a plus d cosine phi and y b is equal to y a which is not also known to us plus d sin phi. So, once I have the coordinates of point b, of course, in terms of this unknown phi, phi is unknown as yet. Then I can express the length of S 4 I can express the length s 4 square as x b minus x q whole square plus y b minus y q whole square. So, that is s 4 square that is what I have written here. 
by substituting the expressions of x b and y b and also x q, y q is of course, 0. In this equation you will find what is not known is phi, phi is as yet unknown, x a is known, y a is known and S 4 is given. So, phi is the only quantity that is not known. So, when I open up and simplify this equation, I can express it in this form which you can very easily do. So, since phi is unknown to us, I express it in terms of sin phi and cosine phi. Where a, b and c they are completely known because y a we have calculated, x a we have calculated and s 4 is given to us. So, the only thing that is not known is phi and we know how to solve this equation. We make the substitution, we define x as tan phi by 2, express sin phi and cosine phi in terms of x, substitute back in our equation, get this quadratic in x whose solution is known to us. So, we know tan phi by 2 in terms of a, b, c which are known to us. Once we have phi, we have this expression of tan phi by 2. So, I have written out the expression of tan phi by 2 in terms of a, b, c and there are two solutions of phi from here, phi 1 and phi 2 which are because of these this sign positive choice of the sign positive or negative here. So, this is with the negative sign and this is with the positive sign. So, these are the two solutions of phi. Here we need to go back once to look at this expression and recall that there were two solutions of x a y a. So, x a y a had two solutions, one with positive sign of x a, the other with the negative sign of x a. So, there were two solutions of x a and y a. Corresponding to these two solutions of x a and y a, you will have two values of a b c. You may call them a 1 b 1 c 1 and a 2 b 2 c 2. So, therefore, for each value of a b c, you will get two solutions of phi this is what we have looked at. So, for each value of a, b, c you have two solutions of phi, phi 1 and phi 2. Now, since there are two sets of a, b, c call them a 1, b 1, c 1 and a 2, b 2, c 2. we will now have four solutions of phi. So, 
So, two solutions for this and two solutions for this set. So, there will be four solutions. <coughs> Now, once we have <coughs> the solutions of phi, we can now express the end effector coordinates x c in terms of x a plus 2 times d cosine phi. Now, this is what is d, so 2 d cosine phi, this being phi and this is 2 d sin phi. So, x e will be x a x coordinate of a plus 2 d cosine phi and y e similarly will be y coordinate of a plus 2 d sin phi. And remember that we have these solutions of x a and y a. So, finally, we have these four solutions which we try to understand graphically. So, we were <coughs> given S 2, S 5, S 4. So, these were given, we were to find out x e y e and phi. Now, we think of how we will assemble this mechanism. So, this point A belonging to this link, this leg can move on this circle. So, as we rotate this leg, A will move on this circle. Since S 5 is also specified, if we rotate this link, then A will move on another circle given by this. So, this is the circle with radius r A or S 5, same as S 5. So, wherever you have intersections of these two circles, A can lie. So, A can lie on the intersections of these two circles. So, there are two possibilities. One is this possibility that has been shown, the other is this possibility. So, these are the two solutions of x A. You can see, you can check that y A remains the same, the y coordinate of A remains the same. So, the x coordinate of A has two solutions. So, as an ordered pair A can have two coordinates, one is here, the other is here. Now, corresponding to this solution, let us say the first solution as shown. Now, since S 4 is also given, so the revolute pair B can lie on the intersection of the circle obtained by rotating this leg. So, when you rotate this leg, so B moves on this circle. Now, because A is fixed here, you can rotate the end effector link. So, therefore, B can move on another circle which is this. So, on the end effector link, B can rotate on this circle. So, therefore, the intersections of these two red circles which are here and here are the 
possible solutions where B can be assembled and that will fix up the end effector link. So, therefore, x e y e and phi get fixed. Now, A has this solution, there is a second solution of A. So, therefore, when you choose this solution of A, then this end effector link when you rotate. So, let me draw out these two legs. So, this is the second solution for A and the end effector link can now be made to rotate about this point A and the S 4 link still rotates. So, B on the S 4 link still rotates on this circle. So, there are two intersections of this as you can see here and here. So, this is one intersection, this is the other intersection. So, this is where B can lie. So, there are two solutions of B for this second location of A. For the first location of A, there were two solutions for B. For the second location of A, there are two locations of B. So, there are four solutions. So, these are the four solutions that we have. So, let us look at this once again. So, we started off with this circle of radius S 2. We want to first locate A. So, we first make a circle with radius S 2 about the origin which is P. Then this second circle with center at R and radius S 5. So, there are two intersections of these two circles. these two intersections correspond to the two solutions of A. Now, once A is fixed, then we have to locate B. So, the end effector link A E can rotate about A and hence B describes a circle and similarly, the leg Q B of length S 4 can rotate about Q as a center with radius S 4. So, I have drawn this circle with center at Q and radius S 4 and with center A, the end effector link can rotate with radius. So, and rotate about A, the radius is D. So, that is the second red circle. So, the intersections are the point uh, indicate uh, correspond to the point B, the intersections correspond to point B. So, there are two intersections. So, two solutions for B. This is for the first choice of A. For the second choice of A, the center at A shifts to the second solution. So, B can lie on the smaller red circle on the end effector link. So, the intersection of the two red circles again correspond to the solu two solutions of B corresponding to the second solution of A. So, these are the four solutions. Let us quickly look at the inverse kinematics problem. So, here we are specified x e, y e and phi which are the 
position and orientation of the end effector uh, uh, end effector and we have to find out s2 s4 s5 which are the actuator throws the prismatic actuators so here i have written out the coordinates of point a in terms of the known quantities you see x e is known phi e is known y e is known so all these are known x e y e and phi these are known so therefore i can calculate x a y a x b y b the coordinates of these two points now once i know the coordinates of these two points it's a matter of simple geometry to express s2 you see s2 is this s2 is nothing but square root of x a square plus y a square then s4 is nothing but square root of x b minus l1 whole square plus y b square from simple geometry and similarly s5 is square root of x a square plus y a minus l1 whole square so given x e y e phi so these are given to us we have been able to calculate the lengths of the actuators s2 s4 and s5 so this is absolutely straightforward so let me summarize we have looked at the displacement analysis of a closed kinematic uh, chain manipulator and we have discussed the example of the 3 rpr kinematic chain we looked at the forward and the inverse kinematics problem for this chain so with that i will close this lecture